Well, praise the Lord. It's another morning. Welcome again to my secret place. And I'm just going to take a few minutes this morning. I just wanted to read. I've just been reading through the book of Acts and also through Isaiah. And uh, a scripture just jumped out at me. So I'd like you to turn to Acts chapter 8. Here's an encouraging scripture to help you start your day. And, um, you know, I, I just encourage you when you start your day in the secret place that, that you don't just... Um, have a few minutes with the Lord, but really take time to saturate yourself in the Word of God, to sit at His feet, to listen to what He has to say, and uh, and only allow these devotionals that are coming out to just encourage you in that direction, um, but obviously spend much more time with the Lord. So, Acts chapter 8, verse uh, beginning with verse 1, it says, And Saul was there giving approval to his death. That's speaking of Stephen. Stephen was just stoned. It's an amazing story of, of Stephen, how he became this martyr. And in the midst of his dying, I mean, who of us wouldn't want to live like that and die that well, where in the midst of him being killed by people who oppose the gospel, he's giving glory to God. He's saying, look, I see Jesus. I see, I see the Father in heaven and Jesus standing, waiting to receive me. And, and then he says, wow, just before he dies, he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. That's amazing. I mean, talk about finishing well and a testimony that is living vibrantly even 2,000 years later. So it goes on to say, on that day, a great persecution broke out against the church at Jerusalem. Now, if you recall from Pentecost up until this time when Stephen is murdered, there are thousands of people coming to Christ. There's the outpouring of the Spirit. There's amazing movement. And because of there's this, this exponential growth for the kingdom of God and people coming to Christ and the anointed preaching of the word, word and boldness, the spirit of boldness on the Christians, because of that, there's a, there's a spiritual conflict going on in the heavenlies. And the demonic, the, anti, the, the that, uh, antichrist spirit is warring against the church. So it says, on that day, a great persecution broke out against the church at Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. Verse 3, but Saul, who would later become the apostle Paul, but Saul began to destroy the church. And obviously we know that can't be done, but that was his intent. It says he began to destroy the church, going from house to house. He dragged off men and women and put them in prison. You know, it's a great reminder to pray for your persecutors, those people who are currently aggressively opposed to the gospel. If it's in social media, world leaders, or people just in your sphere of influence who are hostile to the gospel, pray for them. Because those are the ones that are ripe. It's like... Um, William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army, he said, pray for, the, pray for the hardest people, pray for the worst, go for those people to see them come to Christ. And I think there were few, there are few examples of people who were more hostile uh, against the church, and that is Saul, the Pharisee, who became Paul, the apostle. So pray for your persecutors. It goes on to say, And those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went into Samaria and proclaimed Christ there. And when the crowds heard Philip and saw the miraculous signs he did, they all paid close attention to what he had to say. And with shrieks, evil spirits came out of many, and many paralytics and cripples were healed. And so there was great joy in that city. There's going to be persecution. And when persecution comes, we need, I'll tell you, now's the time that we really need to press into Jesus more and more. And when persecution comes, because that's just, the, that's just what happens when the kingdom of God is advancing, taking ground, that there's going to be a demonic opposition to it. But keep your joy. Preach the gospel. Lay hands on the sick. Cast out demons. Don't be distracted by the persecution, but cause the person persecution to strengthen your faith, to be bold. Jesus is coming back. And Lord, we say, come Lord Jesus, Maranatha. So Father, I pray for the one who is watching right now that is joining, me, joining with me in this secret place. God, that you would give them, as, as the believers prayed in the book of Acts, that you would give 
us right now a spirit of boldness, that we would preach your word and share your gospel with authority and passion, and that signs and wonders would both follow and precede the declaring of the word of God from our lips. God, we are living in exciting times. Help us to keep our eyes solely fixed on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day in the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for joining me in another secret place. And you can subscribe down below. Just click the subscribe button and the, uh, the notification bell to be notified of future devotionals and missionary adventures that Kathy and I do around the world. God bless you. Until next time. Bye-bye.